Smack dab in the middle of California's Sacramento Valley lies a geological oddity of great interest, Sutter Buttes. Dubbed the world's smallest mountain range, the Sutter Buttes are a series of volcanic domes, deformed sedimentary layers, and pyroclastic deposits with a very interesting geologic history that involves both volcanism and natural gas. Offering a window into the broader geology of Northern California, the Buttes peak at 2,122 feet above sea level and lie just west of Yuba City, about 50 miles north of Sacramento. This volcanic complex is anomalous. It exists in a place that it really shouldn't, and geologists have been trying to wrap their heads around why Sutter Buttes are where they are for decades. In this episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures, we're going to learn all about Sutter Buttes by exploring the geology of California's most enigmatic mountain range. Let's do it. Sutter Buttes lie right in the heart of the Sacramento Valley, the northern section of the Great Valley of California that runs right through the center of the state. The Great Valley is an agricultural hub, filled with over 38,000 feet of sediments that eroded from the Sierra Nevada, the Cascades, and the Coast Ranges. The Great Valley has existed in some form for at least 150 million years, as it has served as the forearc basin of several subduction zones within this time frame, including the subduction zone that built the Sierra Nevada during the Mesozoic Era and the ancestral Cascadia subduction zone during the Miocene Epoch. In fact, the northern reaches of the Sacramento Valley are still technically an active forearc basin today, as the Cascade Range picks up north of Chico, with active volcanoes such as Lassen Peak east of the likes of Red Bluff. A forearc basin is a valley that lies in between the main volcanic arc of a subduction zone and the accretionary wedge of a subduction zone. Accretionary wedges are chains of mountains or hills that are composed of rock that has been scraped off of the subducting oceanic plate onto the continental plate and crumpled up. Besides an oceanic trench, they are the closest landform to the actual plate boundary of a subduction zone. Four arc basins form as sediments accumulate from the erosion of the volcanic arc and accretionary wedge of a subduction zone. Volcanic arcs are chains of volcanoes created by the interaction of the subducting oceanic plate with the overriding plate. They form as a result of water accumulating in minerals deep within the subduction zone, lowering the melting point of rock, allowing it to melt into magma, rise, and erupt at the surface of the earth as volcanoes. They typically spring up directly above the area of the subduction zone where the subducting slab is at a depth of about 100 to 140 kilometers. To learn more about how volcanoes form specifically in subduction zones, click on this video. For the vast majority of the last 200 million years, what would become California was a subduction zone, and this is widely expressed in its landforms today. As aforementioned, the Sierra Nevada is the core of an ancient volcanic arc, the Cascades are still an active volcanic arc, the Great Valley is a forearc basin, and the coast ranges and Klamath Mountains are accretionary wedges. At the latitude of Sutter Buttes, subduction ended only 2 million years ago, and roughly 90 miles north of Sutter Buttes, subduction continues to this day. Within the last 30 million years, the San Andreas Fault has pushed north from the latitude of Los Angeles to its current northern terminus at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone at Cape Mendocino, and it will continue to push north for millions of years to come. To learn more about the geologic history of subduction in California, click on this video. Though it has been a forearc basin for all of its time, the Great Valley was below sea level for much of its existence, as it was under a shallow sea for the vast majority of the last 70 million years. Sediments were carried by rivers into this shallow sea, and were eventually compacted and lithified, depositing large amounts of shale, mudstone, siltstone, and sandstone. Eventually, enough sediments were deposited in the Great Valley to put the surface of the valley above sea level. The Great Valley then basically became a giant floodplain, which it kinda still is today, with rivers such as the Feather and Sacramento rivers meandering back and forth and depositing even more sediments. 
Sand, gravel, and mud continue to be deposited by these rivers today above the older shallow marine sediments. And in fact, these rivers depositing these sediments was central to the California Gold Rush, which we'll learn about in a future video. As aforementioned, Sutter Buttes popped up right in the middle of this Four Arc Basin, so what gives? Let's discuss Sutter Buttes in particular right now. The story of Sutter Buttes in particular begins roughly 70 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, when the oldest rocks that outcrop in the Buttes were deposited. Sutter Buttes is composed of three major structural parts, the castellated core, the moat, and the rampart. The castellated core is the volcanic center of Sutter Buttes, formed by rhyolitic, dacitic, and andesitic magma that rose to the surface and created domes and plugs. These volcanic units erupted from about 1.6 to 1.4 million years ago. The moat surrounds the core and is composed of sedimentary rocks that range in age from 70 to 1.6 million years old. These sedimentary layers were pushed up and tilted by the magma that comprises the core of Sutter Buttes. The magma chamber of the Sutter Buttes also deposited intrusive rock below the volcanic layers, further tilting and deforming the sedimentary units that comprise the moat. Additionally, the softest shales and mudstones of the moat have been eroded away since the volcano stopped erupting, forming small valleys between the moat and the rampart. Lastly, the outermost layer of Sutter Buttes is the Rampart, a series of broad, low-sloping hills that were formed by volcanic debris flows from the castellated core of Sutter Buttes. These debris flows mainly radiated outward from the main core, hence the roughly circular shape. Sutter Buttes experienced multiple episodes of volcanism over a period of 200,000 years from 1.6 to 1.4 million years ago, expelling rhyolite, dacite, and andesite. Rhyolite erupted for the first 30,000 years, followed by mainly dacite and andesite. Besides the geochemical analysis that was done on Sutter Buttes, classical geologic evidence of rhyolite erupting first can be seen in the rampart. The lowermost layers of the pyroclastic deposits that occur on the margins of Sutter Buttes are composed of rhyolite, while the higher ones are andesite and dacite. This actually outlines a fundamental principle of geology quite well, the principle of superposition. This principle states that the oldest rocks will outcrop at the lowest point, basically that rock units deposit above older ones and that the youngest rocks will compose the topmost layer of an area, unless acted upon by an outside geologic force. The magmas at Sutter Buttes erupted through several different vents in the complex, forming a suite of numerous domes and plugs, rather than just one main one. Additionally, deposits of a deep crater lake lie in the center of the castellated core. These sand and gravels derived from the andesite of the Buttes are roughly 1,000 feet thick. This lake likely existed during the active period of Sutter Buttes, and due to its young age, the elevation of Sutter Buttes today is likely not much lower than it was during its active period. As previously mentioned, the Sutter Buttes are quite the geographical and geological oddity. They're a volcano that's located smack in the middle of the Sacramento Valley. This has made people wonder, are they a part of the Cascades or the Coast Range volcanic trend? Both? Neither? Let's answer that now. The composition, texture, and age of the volcanic rocks of Sutter Buttes suggest that they are a part of the Coast Range volcanic trend, a series of volcanoes in the Coast Ranges, including the Sonoma and Clear Lake volcanic fields north of San Francisco, among others. That's great and all, but then another question is raised. Why are the Sutter Buttes so far inland if they're a part of the Coast Range volcanic trend? Well, geophysical studies of the area show a major north-south trending linear ridge of heightened magnetism and gravity below the Sacramento Valley. This anomalous ridge runs right beneath the Sutter Buttes. This geophysical anomaly is likely a buried fault that separates the Sierra Nevada batholith and the accreted terrains of the coast ranges at depth. This buried fault is likely where the terrains were stitched onto western North America. Additional faults intersect this buried fault, likely providing the conduits for magma to rise to the surface of the earth and erupt, ultimately forming Sutter Buttes. 
Not only are the Sutter Buttes an interesting volcanic center, they're also a reservoir for natural gas. The area contains abundant natural gas resources. In fact, methane has leaked to the surface in and around Sutter Buttes for thousands of years. Sometimes wildfires ignite these gas leaks, producing blue flames that emerge from cracks in the ground that continue to burn long after wildfires are put out. It's actually pretty trippy, dude. The natural gas at Sutter Buttes was produced by microscopic plankton dying and falling to the seafloor when the Great Valley was a shallow sea. These plankton remains were then buried by as much as 38,000 feet of sediments, facilitating high temperatures and pressures, sufficient in transforming the plankton remains into methane. The volcanism of Sutter Buttes then exhumed these deep sediments to and near the Earth's surface. Rather than having to drill 38,000 feet down at Sutter Buttes, most wells only have to go about 2,500 feet below the Earth's surface before they reach natural gas. At Sutter Buttes, gas was first drilled in 1864, and today, natural gas wells and drilling sites remain in the area. Sutter Buttes is an interesting geological oddity in the Great Valley, its geological history reflecting the broader geology of Northern California in several senses. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures, and if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel, as it really helps me to get more content out to y'all. Thanks for watching, and as always, PEACE! Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, thanks again and peace!